Tonight, a transplant patient who refused to let a setback define him. In some ways, Richard Mangino's life got even richer after an infection in 2002 forced doctors to amputate parts of his arms and legs. It was the only way to save his life. Well, it meant the end of his job as the leader of a grounds crew at Logan Airport and the beginning of a new creative journey. Well, every painting is a journey for me. You know, There's I have no to, question you know, Richard Mangino myself. has a gift. A lot of this stuff is uh, I was in some, a zone, I think. But he only started painting after he lost his arms and part of both legs to an infection. You know, they talk about physical pain, but, you know, uh, the thing is, psychological pain is, is, uh, is, is more. How important was art in your recovery? It was very important because I had a place to go in my mind. I'm not like a regular artist. I just throw stuff together and mix it up. And... Colorful, vibrant paintings with Boston as his muse. The acronym is B-A-D. So it's like bad, but it's Boston after dark. His painting took off, but the hooks that replaced his hands were uncomfortable. So I come up and I design these, and uh, the prosthetist told me that uh, they probably wouldn't work. And I said, they'll work. With his new prosthetics, you know, Richard began know. testing himself in other ways. After you lost your arms and yeah. legs, yeah. you got a real estate license, yeah. learned to ski, and took a writing class. Well, I didn't really learn to ski, but I took ski lessons. <laughs> I've Even with limits, life, he's unstoppable. People might have felt bad that I had no hands, and I try to tell everybody, gee, I, you know, I have a great life. That great life got even better in 2011, when Richard received a double hand transplant at Brigham and Women's Hospital. When you have no hands, it's, it's right obvious, so it's like you're walking around with a sign on your head saying what your illness is. After the surgery, all that changed. It's just like you can fly. I'm like everybody else, and nobody knows. Try to make a fist for me again? No, Five but, years but later, therapists like Marie Jose Benjamin have become trusted friends. Just to have this new philosophy, I ask myself why about everything. Well, I try to think of every time. See, when I can do something, that's to their credit. Whatever I can do is to their credit. And whenever I do something, I try to let them know. What, what, if it's dangerous, I let them know after I do it. <laughs> and in thanking them with sketches and notes, he caught the eye of a hospital donor who turned so Richard's paintings into note cards, now on sale in the hospital's gift shop. Somebody would say, is that how he draws? He calls art a metaphor for life. It doesn't have to be perfect to be good. You painted something. That final stroke doesn't have to be it. You can change it. It's almost like magic. You know I'm crazy over you. This magician is still performing. And I think a few it. years ago, after the transplant, Richard taught himself to play the piano. You're the best thing in my life. I live my life so that uh, those who love me, those who care for me, can li live their life, not having to live mine. Just a few bars, that's all. Richard Note Cards raised some money for the transplant department at Brigham and Women's Hospital, and I asked him what's next. So he says he'd love to publish music, poetry, short stories, or a book. Okay. <laughs> now that is just... <laughs> Wildly inspiring. I left his house feeling so lucky to have met him and his grandsons, Nick and Trevor. I think mm -hmm. how rich their lives are because he's in their life. It, this is going to be a crazy thing to say, but it's almost like his life somehow got better after this terrible thing happened to him. It, 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 just, it just didn't stop. It's like, what's next? There's always something. Incredible. <laughs> Thank Great you, Great story. Good job. <laughs> Phenomenal.